Well, good night, uh, good afternoon, uh, good to see everybody on this Wednesday night uh, service at, at West Franklin Spirit of Life Church. I'd like to welcome you uh, tonight to uh, the broadcast of the Wednesday night service. Um, those of you that may be uh, tuning in or picking up uh, on the broadcast right now, you probably noticed the background uh, that we have, uh, the Savior's Cross background that we normally use on Tuesday night. Uh, we're going to do a little experimenting for a, a few weeks and uh, see what happens. We're going to move the Savior's Cross broadcast to our Wednesday night service. Uh, we're going to be opening up a brand new subject tonight, uh, the subject on the book of Galatians. Uh, the, uh, and I won't go into what it's about. You, you tune in and uh, stay with us. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to carry on our, our normal custom of taking some prayer requests and have a song. So I'd like to open up uh, the service tonight. If, or does anyone have any spoken prayer requests? Brother David. Chris and Kayla. Yes. Okay. Okay, member Wanda, yes. Anyone else, Brother Jamie? Uh, you remember, uh, <coughs> I called her yesterday. She called and, and uh, we talked for 20 to 30 minutes. And uh, the Lord is working in her. And uh, she said, y'all just keep praying. Keep praying that the Lord would move on her, on her heart. And uh, she was, you know, she was sensitive to the Lord. She felt the word. Amen. 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 Yes, sir, Lane. Pray for Haley. Yes. Sarah, Brother Larry. Martha, Diane, Debbie. Okay. <coughs> yes. Yes. Harry Ward, yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, bless his heart. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Derek Wardlaw, praying for him. Y'all remember uh, Elizabeth also. She has had these uh, this allergy season. Um, that stuff has got in her chest. She's done went through a round of prednisone. Uh, she had to take her emergency inhaler uh, earlier today. Just can, and taking some antibiotics. And it seems to be... A yearly thing this time a spring thing for Liz like that every year which a lot of people Sally has been sick with it uh, among others that's been dealing with it I think Linda Miss Linda actually had to go back to the doctor again uh, with the same same problem so those that are dealing with allergies and and what have you in this uh, congestion and all this stuff pray that the Lord will move that brother Darrell did you have one Okay, yes, yes. Anyone? Unspoken. Xavier? Okay. 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 Praying for Chris and Mom and the baby. Amen. Manio and Katie. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. 
Julie? Aunt Chris? Yes. Remember Julie? Yes. Yes, sweetheart. Okay. I see her. Yeah, he got braces and he got some stitches. Yes, bless his heart. And we'll remember him. Yes, all of our children and grandchildren. Yes. We have a, as you've heard, several of the guys are here tonight that go into the, uh, the Gaston County Jail, and some, you guys are fixing to go back to Dallas, from what I under, Cleveland, Cleveland County, yeah, and, uh, and we also have um, a Bible ministry um, that we ship uh, prison Bibles all over the United States, uh, pr provide free uh, study Bibles, so yes, um, uh, Continue to help us pray that, and you guys. I mean, if York, Yorkers, they're probably next to open back up. They're starting to ease restrictions, and let's pray for these uh, for these inmates, these 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 men and these women. Uh, they this year or two years, two years that uh, they it's been the gospel has been locked out because of COVID, and uh, they are so hungry. Uh, for for the word of God and and hungry for people to go in and love on them and and preach to them so yes amen continue to pray for that anyone else anyone else all right yes Mike. yes 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 amen Amen. The gospel is what the world needs. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, absolutely. It's been uh, requested that we gather at the altar. If you can and you're able, you can come come down and stand or kneel, whatever you'd like. You don't have to. Uh, but if you want to gather around. <coughs> and also, while, while folks are coming down, we'll mention those that are watching by social media. Uh, many, many requests that we get uh, on social media, uh, prayer requests, those that are sick in body, sick in mind, sick in spirit, and uh, the Lord knows. So let's, let's all pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity, Lord, to come back into your house, Lord, and pray, Lord, tonight. Lord, to lift up, Lord, uh, heavy hearts, Lord, to you for those that are sick and those that are afflicted. Um, those that uh, are, are destitute, Lord, we, we, we ask uh, through the bloodstained mercy seat, Lord, through the authority of what Jesus has accomplished on the cross, Lord, that's why we ask and that's how we ask and that is the way, Lord, that we do approach the Father, Lord. And in that vein, Lord, we ask, since we have the privilege, Lord, to come boldly to the throne room of grace, Lord, I pray, Lord, for every person that is sick in body, these that are dealing with cancer, uh, Lord, these that are dealing with uh, kidney problems, Lord, these that are uh, sick with uh, congestion and uh, um, problems with the lungs, Lord, and this, this, uh, these things that uh, are, are pulling us down, Lord, in our health, Lord, I pray, Lord, that 
you would do a great work in their life. Lord, we believe, Lord, that there is healing, Lord, in the atonement. Lord, I believe, Lord, that we can call upon you, Lord, and ask and pray and, and believe in, Lord, and that you will intervene, Lord, not only, Lord, in our physical lives, Lord, but uh, in our uh, spiritual lives, Lord, and in our mental capacity. Lord, I pray, Lord, tonight for all of those, Lord, that are dealing with uh, struggling in some area of their life, Lord, whether they be here or whether they be by the way of social media. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, would uh, just permeate this service tonight, that would permeate each heart, permeate each family. Lord, I pray, Lord, that the, the, the broadcast and the study, Lord, tonight that we're, we'll attempt to go in, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will have your way Lord, uh, we are just men. We're just men and women. Lord, we, we have no revelation outside of you and your word. We have no revelation outside of the person and work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray, Lord, that uh, you will give us unction, Lord, from the Holy Ghost. Lord, that you will give us power, Lord, from on high. Lord, to be able to expound your word, Lord, and do no violence to it. Lord, I pray, Lord, for those that are uh, dealing with drugs and addiction. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that bondages are broken. Lord, I pray that chains will fall. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray. Lord, for our streets. Lord, I pray for our inmates. Lord, I pray for the men and women in the jails and in the prisons, Lord, that are desperate, reaching out for hope and reaching out for help. Lord God, I pray, Lord, for all of the unspoken requests, those that have requests, Lord, of their own. They're dealing with things in their body and in their mind. Lord, I lift them up. Lord, we love you tonight, Lord, and we believe, Lord, that you are our only hope, Lord, and we reach to you. Lord, continue to bless this church. Continue to bless all the churches, Lord, in the area. Lord, help us, Lord, to win the lost. Help us, Lord, to reach out and win those lost souls. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask, and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask Brother Ellis to come and lead a song. Here we go. 
excuse me. All right, gentlemen. Make your way up. And we'll see what the Lord will do. There may be some that's watching um, that's saying, what in the world are they doing? Well, uh, we're going to attempt to do uh, some Bible study tonight uh, out of the uh, book of Galatians. And uh, we, if you have your Bible, you can open up with us to the uh, great book of Galatians. And we're going to make an attempt with the help of the Lord uh, to, to go through it uh, verse by verse. And I'm not going to try to give a synopsis on it um, as an introduction, but I can tell you this. Uh, the book of Galatians is a very, very interesting book, a very needful book uh, in the uh, what we, I guess we, what we would call in modern Christianity, uh, modern, the modern church age. Um, there's some very, very blunt statements uh, made in this book uh, from the Apostle Paul uh, concerning uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Got a little feedback going on. If you have to cut me off, just cut it, cut it down or whatever you need to do. And again, this is an experiment. And uh, this is the first time that we've done it, I guess per se, with a, a live audience. Uh, but we're going to uh, jump right in in uh, the book of Galatians. And uh, we're just going to let the Word of God do the talking. And uh, we're going to let the Word of God uh, do the explaining. And uh, I believe that this book will begin to bloom uh, in your heart and, and, and life. Uh, I would like to say this, folks, uh, there is no insignificant word in the Bible. There is nothing that is insignificant in God's word. The word of God is given to us for life and living. And uh, it shows us the path of, of life. It shows us the right path. In a, in a day and time where there's many, many roads, many avenues, many ways, many beliefs. There's a lot of belief systems out there. And uh, we're going to be looking at that really in particular within uh, the confines of this book tonight in the book of Galatians. And uh, we'll read a few verses and then we'll stop. And, and by the way, uh, Brother James Wassman, um, Brother David McCall, uh, James Ellis, Daryl Purser, and my name's uh, Jeff Williams. And uh, it's good to have you tonight. So uh, let's see. Oh, okay, well, you, you want to, uh, do you want to give, I'm going to let you do that. I have some, but you give some details concerning um, the writing of the book of Galatians. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, obviously, this is an epistle of, or a letter of, from Paul um, to the church in Galatia. And the book of Galatians is probably the most powerful New Testament defense of the basic nature of the gospel. Uh, that we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, by the fa uh, through faith of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the basis of our faith. That is where our faith should reside. And, and, and the Apostle Paul really, uh, really breaks it down in this book, and it's a really beautiful book. If you haven't studied it, you're in the right place, because this is going to be a great study. Um, the purpose of it was to debunk some of these Jewish teachers or the Judy. Judaizers, Judaizers uh, they were going behind Paul after, he, after his first visit there, and they were saying, oh yeah, Paul's preaching is right, but, you, but you've got to get, do this, this, and this too. And they were, they were front-loading the gospel with <coughs> works, uh, requiring the churches to perform certain works. And he wanted to reestablish his authority uh, amongst those churches where the people had come behind him kind of, uh, pressing him down and pressing his teaching down, so that's really all I wanted to say about that. Okay, and just just to just to sum it up, and we're gonna we're gonna 
see that the Word of God is going to show us here in just a few moments that it is absolutely imperative that your heart or nor my heart does not add anything to what our Lord has accomplished his person and his work on Calvary right because the gospel the gospel is pure it's pure and it's enough and we're going to see that there were some folks as brother David has just mentioned that come in and wanted to tack on works to the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and the message that the Apostle Paul uh, give the church at Galatia during that time and um, uh, we're going to see in a few moments and just for for just for our, all of our learning sake let's 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 get it in our minds that we must not add anything that we can do to what Christ did we, we can't, and what, what we're going to find out is as we move through this epistle, we're going to find out that when a person does that, a person puts themselves under the position of what the Bible refers to as law. And when you and I put ourselves in a position of law, the Holy Spirit has no grounds to work in your life. That's right. And one of the things, too, that I think is very, very important to mention before we start reading, the book of Galatians is not only a treatise on the defense of justification by faith. It is also a defense on the doctrine of sanctification, on how we live for God. And we can't, we can't, we can't have a, a, a cross way to, to, to live that way either. In other words, we can't, we can't accept salvation by grace through faith, and then sanctification by self. That's right. It don't it don't work that way. And you say you say, well, brother, why why is this important? The, one of the things is the the main thing is, and we're going to see, uh, is that we don't want to do anything to do violence to what our Lord has wrought in His redemption plan. That's right. And number two, I don't know about you guys. But I want the Holy Ghost of God working in my life on a daily basis. I need him doing in me and through me what I cannot do on my own. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there is one sure-fired way to shut the Holy Spirit down in your life as far as, as aiding you in your daily walk. It is to put faith somewhere else That's other right. than Amen. the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. So... We're going to start, and uh, we'll read a few verses, and let's see if the Word of God bears witness to what, what we've already said. Um, we'll start, uh, Brother Ellis, you want to you wanna start uh, in the, we're going to read um, the, first five. the first five verses, which will be an introduction, and we're taking uh, some notes out of the Expositor Study Bible. Everybody don't have that, but we're going to go ahead and read them. And uh, then we'll go back to verse 1 and, and uh, do, a, do a review. And, and gentlemen, just jump in. Ain't it? Just, there's no order. Just jump in wherever the Lord, the Lord uh, tells, you, tells you to do it. Not your turn. Right. We're right. Verse number 1. Uh, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. The expositor's note says this means that Paul did not submit the authority of his apostleship to men, neither was it conferred on him by man. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Refers to all the churches in that region. Grace be to you and peace from God and the Father. Made possible by the cross. And from our Lord Jesus Christ. Who made it possible. Who gave himself for our sins. The cross again. That he might deliver us from this present evil world. The finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, or i.e. the cross, alone can set the captive free. According to the will of God and our Father. The standard of the entire process of redemption. To whom be glory forever and ever. Divine glory. Amen. Amen. Would anyone uh, care to open up with a comment on, on the first verse? 
I can. I can. Uh, okay. Like, sure. Yeah. Okay. The fir- I like. I like the first verse especially. You're like, well, that's kind of like saying hello, isn't it? <laughs> hello, I come in the name of Jesus. But there's really more to it because Paul wanted to establish with the church body when he was writing this immediately establish his position and his authority. He wanted to reestablish that right away. And that's why he said, Paul, an apostle, not of men, but of God and God the Father. And he immediately wanted to establish who ordained him in that position and authority. So, uh, and he immediately establishes that our Savior Jesus Christ is alive, if you look at that. It says, and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So, uh, Christ is alive, and he proclaimed all of that in that one little sentence, and I think that's pretty cool. Amen, amen. Also, the word apostle uh, means one that is commissioned by the Lord for a special mission or task. And um, we, we, we understand through the word of God, uh, I like to put it this way, in the Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we have uh, the apostles that were chosen uh, by the Lord himself to, to live with Christ, to be with Christ, to understand his love, his character, and, and, and the, uh, Jesus had, had appointed them apostles or messengers of his, his person. And, but we'll see in the epistles, and we're going to see as we move forward, that Jesus Christ appointed the apostle Paul to, to tell us of his work, of the, Lord's, of the Lord Jesus Christ's work. And the, the, the scripture says that um, Paul was given the task of being the master builder of the church with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So as Brother David has said, um, Paul has established, not through pride or through arrogance, Paul has established his apostleship and you're going to see why in just a few moments, why he comes out so boisterous at the beginning because there's some things going on in the church there um, that uh, shouldn't be going on as we shall see. That's right. Any? He was actually, and just to say it a, a, little, bit, a little bit different, but uh, hopefully to more clarify what Paul is doing here, he's authenticating the source of his apostleship good. is what he's doing. He's, he's letting uh, the churches know that it wasn't uh, any man that uh, had any part in him becoming what he had become. Uh, that is an apostle. He had had an, a direct contact on the road to Damascus. He saw the Lord Jesus Christ he, uh, I mean, and really an apostle is one that has seen him. Uh, that's, right. that's one of the evidences of apostleship. He saw him. He was able to uh, uh, see him on that road to Damascus uh, the, when the Lord revealed himself. And so, again, basically what he's trying to uh, let the people know is that Christ and Christ alone is the source of him being what he is as an apostle. And then, uh, and I don't want to get too far ahead, but, when he, but after he went along and after he went up to Jerusalem, uh, as we'll see further in our study, you'll discover that uh, the apostles approved it. They, uh, they approved him as an apostle, but he didn't need their approval. He sure didn't. He, he was given the covenant, he was given uh, the message of the new covenant. And that is salvation by grace through faith plus nothing and minus nothing. No works involved. Amen. One of the things, too, that in my study as I was as, as preparing this, uh, it, there's some writings concerning that these Judaizers, uh, because they come out of Jerusalem, uh, and because they were uh, keeping the law, they were keeping the ceremonial law, uh, they, were, they were discounting or trying to discount Paul's um, authenticity right. in his apostleship. That's and they right. were coming uh, 
to that church at Galatia saying basically what I got out of it. They were saying that you don't need to listen to Paul. You need to listen to us. Yeah, and, right. you know, um, I want to turn it over to one of the other men. But uh, one lesson here that, that, um, that we can see that it is oftentimes that Satan will attack the message through the man. Yes. Uh, Satan will try to attack the, uh, the person that is trying to proclaim truth and trying to proclaim uh, the true gospel. And that's exactly what, um, what Paul was going through during this time. But as, as, we've, as we've seen, that he established and he defends uh, his apostle, apostleship during this Amen. time. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> quoting from uh, Henry Ironside's book, he quote, uh, quote St. Jerome, who says, really, there are four classes of ministry in the professing Christian church. First, there are those sent neither from men nor through men, but directly from God. This would cover the Apostle Paul. And uh, unless God gives you his approval, and I'll get to that in just a minute, don't, don't do nothing without God's approval or his permission. Yeah. But... Uh, Let's see. Then secondly, Jerome says, there are those who get their commission from God and through man. As for instance, uh, a man feels uh, distinctly called by God to preach and he is examined by his brethren and they are satisfied that he is called to preach and so commend him to the work, perhaps by laying on hands. And so he's a servant of God, a minister of God from God and through man. Then there's the third class, that those who have their commission from man, but not from God. These are the men who have chosen the Christian ministry as a profession. Perhaps they never had been born again, but have chosen the ministry as a profession. They apply to the uh, bishop or the presbytery uh, or the church to ordain them. But it's a... Uh, Charles Spurgeon said, ordination can do nothing for a man who has not received his call from God. Amen. That's right. That's right. And, and it's simply a matter of laying, it's not just a, it's a simple, it says, it is simply a matter of laying on hands on empty heads, <laughs> is the way he puts it. Empty hands uh, on empty heads. Yeah. Then the man goes out and heralds as a minister, but he is not God's minister. And then Jerome says there is a fourth class. They are men who pose as Christ's ministers and have received their authority neither from God nor from man, but they are simply freelancers. Hmm. So that's four kinds. But that, that first one is what the Apostle Paul said. He, he didn't receive it from uh, men. And, and he goes on to say he didn't receive it from Peter, from Paul, or nothing. He was, he, he was the glory that he was commissioned by God and we know how that happened on the road to Damascus that's where right. he seen the Lord Jesus Christ Amen, yeah. Amen. Brother Amen. James yes, yes that's a good word right there I, I, when, I, when I read Galatians and I when I look at Paul and I try to put my mind where he's at and I can see a, a person that's really irritated or something that's what I see yeah. out of Paul and uh, he, plain like, like the gentleman said he is establishing his credentials here for a reason and, um, and it's interesting is that Paul, by revelation, uh, was taught the gospel. None of the, none of the 12 disciples taught Paul the gospel. That's right. That's right. He received it straight from God. Amen. And that's, that's, that's really right. good stuff there, but that's yeah. all I have right now. Amen. That, 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 that's good. That's good work. He, uh, he, he was not, as the scripture says, now, now we'll read it and we'll move, let's read it again and we'll move on. Paul, an apostle, and look, you can look at your scripture. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. All right. It's a lot of meat in there. Yeah, a lot of, lot of meat and a lot of information uh, right there. So we'll, we'll try to move on. 
uh, verse number two, uh, it says, And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. And there seem to have been several churches planted uh, in Galatia. And Galatia uh, today would be in, uh, I guess, uh, I've read central Turkey would be the area in which those churches uh, were set. And, and evidently there was more than one. Uh, that uh, these churches were established uh, on uh, one or more of Paul's missionary journeys uh, in that area. And them, them, them church plants, they, they popped up through, through the gospel. And um, Paul had left. And then he's, he's got wind of what's going on. Uh, so that just the FYI there. And all the brethren, you have anything I on do. that? I do. In my study on that, I, I, this is all new to me too because I'm, I'm a student just like you are. But in my study on that, uh, Galatia was in they had two regions, North Galatia and Southern Galatia. And uh, the Galatia that Paul was speaking of is in the southern province because it was a Roman province. And uh, there was cities there, Pisidian, Antioch, Iconium, Lystra, and Derby, and he established churches in each of these cities along this travel route. And on that travel route between the cities, there were little churches that popped up from people that were got tired of traveling into the city to go to church, so they'd start their own little church in this little community, and it just blew up in that region. And this was all these were established on his first missionary journey uh, that was discussed in Acts chapter 13. Uh, it's a great study, man. I tell you, I was up way too late reading. <laughs> yeah, you can get uh, what, as much as you want out of God's word. Praise the Lord. Uh, verse 3, any other uh, comments on, on verse number 2? Okay. It's okay. just, I got something here it's interesting. I read this last night. It says the inhabitants according to Dr. Ironside, uh, the inhabitants of Galatia are the same people racially as the ancient uh, inhabitants of Ireland, Wales, the Highlands of Scotland, also France, Northern Spain, and the Gauls. It's where they uh, migrated, so to speak, which would make sense when uh, Columbus come to America. Uh, right before that happened, the king of Spain had uh, kicked out all the Jewish peoples out of Spain. And it's been said there were some Jews on the Nina, the Pina, and, and the Santa Maria, and the Mayflower when they first come over. I mean, it, it would, that would back up if you care to go into the genealogy of these people, uh, the, the Irish, you know, uh, the Scots, all that part of, uh, I guess it would be uh, yes. Western Europe, yeah. and that said that they're kin to the Galatians. Yes, that, yeah. that brings up a thought. These Gauls or mm -hmm. Celts, uh -huh. um, they one thing to keep in mind: they, they, these people, these people groups, they they had no prior exposure to. The Jewish law, they, in other words, they had not heard no, the Jewish, Jewish laws nor the gospel. In other words, they were, they were um, uh, what would be a good word? They just have, hadn't, been, they hadn't been witnessed to on either side. So their minds were free and open. As a matter of fact, they, they worshipped heathen gods and very, you know, uh, they was in those, those folks, that, they were in a lot of, a lot of mess in, in their worship. But I said that to say this, is that when Paul came to and, and, and began sh uh, planting these churches and sharing the gospel, the purity of the gospel, the, the salvation by grace through faith, plus m nothing, minus nothing. You know, they, it really had set them free. I mean, it was the greatest news that they ever had ever, and it is the greatest news that anyone hey, could man, ever, man. ever hear. Salva that's that's salvation good. by grace. That's good news. By, it, it is, brother, it that's is good, good news. Good. And, and, and again, and we'll see it in, in just a moment, these harsh words are right around the corner that we'll, we'll hear Brother Paul, but... Um, Paul had given them the purity 
of the gospel, the pure gospel, and they were set free. And they were living, they were, they were saved by grace through faith. And not only that, they were living every day of their lives by grace through faith. Yes. Yeah. And there's freedom in that. There's, there was total freedom in that. And, and there's no telling how the churches were growing like you were talking about and the ch different churches popping up. And then these legalizers come in. Mm -hmm. And they come in and said, hey... Uh, can I preach Sunday? Oh well, yeah, I believe I believe in Jesus. I'm, well, 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 come on in. Well, and then and then it's subtle. They say, you know, Satan is a very very subtle, and 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 error is is as it's been said often rides on the back of truth, and right. uh, uh, the Lord and the Lord is very very adamant. I can't overstress it. He and God the Father is very very adamant. What his son accomplished, who he is and what he did is enough and it is an offense. It is an offense to God, to a holy God for me to say for instance that my church membership or whatever, even my water baptism, and we're going to get into those things, but just, just to suggest in my thoughts that somehow that allows me to obtain righteousness, what it does, it breaks it all down. It, sure it completely destroys what the Lord Jesus Christ accomplished at Calvary. And we're going to, we're going to see that in just a moment. Brother Jeff, I want to mention this about these Judaizers, that when they came into the church, they would embrace the fact that salvation is by grace, through faith. But they said they would teach that you have to keep the law in order to remain saved. And that, it, that, that became an epidemic then, and it's led all the way up to now. Right. Sure. We're living in the same, right. under the same conditions that Paul was fighting against then. Uh, there are those that are teaching today, and I mean very, right very down the road. Yeah, it's right here. That it yeah, right you right uh, we believe in salvation by grace through faith, but that's that's there the is no but. There's no buts. There's no buts. There but. is Get no buts. Well, I if mean, if, bus out of here, if right? the right. but exactly comes right. in, this is where error steps in. Amen. That's right. Because Amen. salvation Amen. is by grace through no faith buts. alone. Amen. Not that's good news Not right in uh, a denomination, not in uh, a work or anything that you can in a person. That's right. Salvation Amen. is in the person of Christ. That's right. Christianity is Christ. Amen. And it's all in Christ. If it's in anything else, it's not real salvation. Mm -hmm. So your faith has to be central, central in the person of Christ and centered on the person of Christ. That's right. And, and you don't need, you, you say, well, what else do we, you, what else can you do? He paid it all. That's right. It's Amen. done. That's right. That's, That's why he said, and I believe that, uh, that probably the, the, maybe, I would say maybe the, the, the uh, key verse to the whole book of Galatians is chapter five, verse one, where he says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. Mm -hmm. wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not Amen. entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Right. This is where you were and, and now you want to go back? Paul is saying that, that's crazy. He's trying, to, he's trying to get across the message that we're preaching here. There's only, there's only one message. There's only one means of freedom. There's only one means of deliverance. Amen. By the cross. Amen. It's the cross of Christ. It's what Christ did for us. It's what he did in us and, and what he, he did as us. He took us. Hallelujah. Yeah. With Amen. him. And I'm not trying to preach. Go on. Preaching, brother. <laughs> but but <laughs> I really, I'm not. But I, I'm just saying, it's going. exciting. It's, good. It is. It is. it's good. exciting it's good. when you begin yes. to think about what I have been freed from. What you have been liberated yes. from. Amen. You're not under 
Uh, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? No. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Yes, sin God. shall not have dominion over right. you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Amen. If Amen. you use that word but, the next word better, but God. That's, That's right. right. But Amen. God. It always must yeah. end with God. That's it right. always begin and end with God. Yes. But God. Amen. What, what I see all these passages here, too, we have to remember when we talk about the gospel, um, it's to whosoever. Yes. It's to yes. whosoever qualifies. Amen, bro. Okay, he doesn't pick and choose. That's right. It's everybody's qualified. Yes. Doesn't matter if you're in prison. That's right. Doesn't matter how poor you are. And how rich you are, it's, it's the whosoever. Amen. Yes, my brother. Amen. 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 Good, brother Amen. Good yes. point. Brother. Amen. And when Paul started this, you know, he, he was kind of yes. aggravated because he had spent all this time That's establishing right. this church. He and not that he felt like I did all this. He knew God did it, but God had used him, and he had spent his time going out and traveling to these people and establishing these churches. And not only that, in verse two, it starts off with, and it says, "And all the brethren which are with me." I mean, you know, he, he, he's saying, this is not just my opinion, guys. These guys that are with me I believe what I'm getting ready to say, too, because he says, and with all the brethren with the, which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. All of us are telling you, all of you churches, listen to this. And this next verse is like a, a bomb. Amen. Amen. Word, one, one other thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. One, one other thing, Pastor. I... As you get into the context of this first chapter, uh, and I, I know we'll get to it, and, but I think it's important to mention it, especially if the Holy Spirit brings it up, and he has. Paul, he says, if any man preach any other gospel than the gospel that you've heard me preach, let him be accursed. That's right. And he says it again. And then he goes on to say to the same, he's writing to these churches, he said, I would that they were even cut off. That's right. And that word cut off could mean a couple of things. Yeah. But cut off, period. Uh, and, and we'll just go with that one. Cut off from the, from the whole scene. Uh, in other words, I would God just, just rid them. Amen. Just get rid of them. Get them out of the way. Because there are those that are coming. And there are those that are in the church that creep in. Mm unawares I mean they'll, they'll creep in unawares and begin to corrupt one thing that we talked about last night and after the fact after the, we, we talked the message of the cross the message that we're preaching must we must stay with it That's right. this is Paul said I've determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's right. If we stay Amen. with that, the Holy Spirit will move. Every time. Amen. That's right. Amen. Praise go the ahead, Lord. Preach. Amen. <laughs> we want to go to verse three. <laughs> sure. move it. I mean that is that is that it's good stuff. We're gonna get we're gonna see all of that compounded and, and proven through the scripture. But Paul would go on to say, Grace be to you Amen. and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, even, even in this small statement, solidifies um, where grace and peace comes from. Grace and peace comes, comes from the Father through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and it says, and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here, here in Paul's opening words of this letter, He's lifting up the finished work yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And uh, I do want to clarify just a moment, uh, just quickly, because um, my, my wife said, told me today I need to, needed to do this. <laughs> you need uh, to do it, And then, I need to do it. <laughs> uh, hey, listen to me. Uh, uh, w when we say, we say here in our church a lot, uh, the cross, the cross, the cross. And, and, um, and we, we use the terminology, the message of the cross or the preaching of the cross. And some may say, why, why does he or they, why are they constantly saying cross, cross, cross? Um, it is not the wooden beams 
in which we're speaking of. That's right. It is what he did. Mm -hmm. It is through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the source. L yes. Listen to this. Jesus Christ is the source of all things that you and I receive from God. But what he did on the cross is the means That's exactly right. by which we receive all of, these, all of these things. And the Holy Spirit, and see, that is why, that is why it is so important, faith, faith and having the correct object of faith, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and what he did, that's why it's so important. And, and we, we, we can talk about that another time, but faith, the, the churches all over the world claim some kind of faith. Yeah. But see, we, we'll see here in just a moment that these Judaizers, or these Jews, would come in and say, hey, my faith is in Jesus, but, but. but also my faith is in this, 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 and that. Well, what it, what it does and what it, it did to them as it does to us, it nullifies it. That's right. See, Jesus Christ is the new covenant. He just did not bring the new covenant. That's he right. is the new That's covenant. Right. The new covenant from that, that God has sent is, is the new covenant is not a religion. The new covenant is a person. And, and two, somebody might say, what's the big deal well, you know, these, these, these guys and, and these, these preachers, they were bringing uh, one thing in particular was the rite of circumcision. Mm -hmm. And we, 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 we've heard about that down through the years, that, that, the, that, that the, uh, the rite of circumcision that was given uh, back in the Old Testament. And they kept keeping that. Um, and circumcision was a, a, an identification, so to speak, of the Jew, for the Jew back then. But the circumcision pointed to the circumcision of the heart that the Lord Jesus Christ would do through his finished work. Well, the Jews, they, held, they were holding on to that. They were saying, hey, you, will you go ahead and and do this and, and, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and faith and all that good stuff. But we're going to hold, you, you really need to cap it off. This is what really puts the, put the, the icing on the cake. Well, what you, what, when in turn what they did was destroyed the cake. That's exactly right. They destroyed the cake. And, <laughs> and, right. and someone may say, well, it, you know, and we, we talk about baptism. Baptism, water baptism is biblical it's, a, it, it's in the bible we are to be water baptized but, but the water don't save that's right that's, right. that's the problem and it and don't sanctify water either. don't save and it, and and water don't sanctify and that's the, that's the thing and 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 the the bottom line is when we talk about coupling grace and law what it any any act of law or keeping of any kind of rule it derives its power from the flesh that's right it derives right. its power from the flesh a ritual and and listen all rituals find their beginnings in humanism that's right. rituals are made by men that's right it's okay to have a have an order of service it's okay to have, a, have things decently in order. But if our ritual becomes our faith, mm. if what we do becomes our faith, we nullify what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And even more importantly, I know, I know that many people think that, that the, the book of Galatians is solely a treatise on justification by faith. I lean more toward the fact that it is a book on sanctification because Paul makes a statement in this book that having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Are you now made perfect by the things that you do? So if we all want the Holy Spirit working in our lives, is there anybody that don't? And let me throw this out there and I'm going to turn it back over. And this is a question that was posed to me years ago. Does the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer comes in at salvation, does the Holy Spirit work 
automatically mm. on a daily basis. Mm. No, he don't. Because if he did, there would never be a church split. That's right. I would never fly off the handle at my wife. Come on now, preach. That's right. <laughs> That's a good point. Nor she, would she fly off the handle at me. That's right. <laughs> or nor, nor would I say something smart to one of you. If the Holy Spirit worked automatically, those things wouldn't happen. That's right. That's exactly right. The Holy Spirit works in the confines of Jesus Christ and his finished work alone. Exclusive. When I put my faith in anything else... If I, if, I think, if I think even for one instance that there's something going on between me and God because we're preachers, <laughs> what we have done, we have shut the Holy Ghost of God down yep. as far as working in us and through us. And this is one of the reasons, one of the reasons Paul in these short little six little chapters Usually a short letter, a letter, when you mail somebody and the letter's short, it's direct and to the point. Yep. We got something to say, I'm going to say it, and, and uh, adios. That's it. And that's what Paul was doing here in, in this. Preacher, I want to mention one other thing about the new covenant. The new covenant uh, is, is not, of course, as we know, a list of commands or a list of rules. That's right. Uh, the new covenant is life. The, Paul even said, he went, he went on to say that the, the letter killeth, right. but the spirit giveth life. Amen. So it's impossible for us to keep any part of the law. Amen. We can't, if you broke one, you broke them all, Jesus. That's right. They're all broken. Uh, we're, we're all lawbreakers. But now that we have received Christ by faith, by grace, through faith, we don't live by the law. We live by the life, the life of another. There's somebody living in us that's not us. Amen. And, and we can't, we can't, exactly. we've got to get it that we can't live the Christian life in the power and energy of our own soul or our flesh. It's a spirit thing. The Holy Spirit came to live in my spirit that he might take over. That's right. His spirit takes over my spirit. It was dead. I didn't have nothing to give. My spirit was lifeless. I was still born spiritually. But when the Holy Spirit came in, my, my spirit was resurrected yes. in newness of life. That's right. And now we can walk in that life. And by the life of another. It's by his life, not by the letter. Amen. We've got to keep that in mind. Now, is the letter significant? Paul said, I didn't come to destroy. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. And is the law profitable? Yes. Absolutely. You're not going to know what you are without right. the preaching of law. That's right. You've got to hear uh, what you can't do. You're incapable of it. And when we hear that, we come to the end of ourselves. That's right. The Holy Spirit right. does That's the right. convicting, he, he, and the Father does the drawing, and Jesus does the saving. Yes. Brother Ellis, quickly one That's second good, while we're still on that vein. You, you're speaking of the law. He's speaking of the law and, and the keeping of the law in our own effort does not save. It does not. Mm -mm. And that is what Sometimes we take on that attitude, especially after we come to Christ. Well, I am going to look at the list, and I'm not going to do anything anymore. Well, what you've done, and what, or what I have done, is that we have taken it out of the Holy Spirit's hands and put it back in our own hands. Yes. And when we put it back in our own hands, we're going to fail over and over again. Right. As a matter of fact... If you, think, if you want to think about the law, and if you want to boast in the law, if you think that, well, you know, you, I'm a good person, or I'm, I'm better than him, or I'm better, and, you, and that's, that, all that's pride anyway. That's right. That's where all of that comes from. But Jesus, Jesus 
he not only fulfilled the law, but he set a higher moral code. That's right. So if, if we can't keep the 10, mm. there is no way we would be able to attain the, the moral code that he set forth. And you say, what are you talking about? We're talking about uh, the, 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 one of the commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus said, I got one better for you. If you <laughs> even look, look. Yeah. if you have even you looked, look you have them. already committed adultery with her in your heart. And um, but folks won't like to, like to hear this. Folks don't. And, and this, this is where the rubber meets the road. As far as the male is concerned, he has to have the help of the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. <laughs> right. You Every other day. men might be exempt. Y'all might have it under control. Come on, brother. But the Holy Ghost That's has right. to do in me what I cannot do That's for myself. It. It. And as long as I keep my faith in Jesus Christ Amen. and his finished work, the Holy he Ghost will, will squeeze my yeah. old wicked heart mm. right. and he'll do the Amen. work. And yeah. that is why it is so important not to add to what my Lord has done. Amen. 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 The law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus has set us free from the Amen. law of sin and death. And that's our na the namesake of our church is the law of the Spirit of life in Christ that's Jesus, right. Spirit of life. Amen. What I'd like to do is maybe, uh, gentlemen, read down through uh, verse number 9 and some closing comments. We're about out of time. And just to cap off the, the Paul's... Uh, frame of mind to reinforce what we've been saying. Sure. Um, and verse 6, said, Paul said to him, uh, I marvel, or I, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted, I, I'm beside myself, that you are so soon removed yeah. mm. the Holy Spirit. from Him. That's right. From Him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, mm. which is not another. But there would be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You know, church, we have got to get it in our mind. We have got to get it in our mind and in our spirits that if God says it, it's important. It's relevant and important. Amen. If, 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 if the, the Lord is telling me that there is the possibility of a perversion of the gospel, I want to know what that is. We want you to. I want to know what that is. And God wants us to know what the Holy That's Spirit right. of God wants us to know what that is. But though we, and it's mentioned twice here, we see that Paul repeats it twice. And the, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, he pulls no punches. He, Paul says, but though we, and he included himself, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And then he says, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that that ye have received, let him be accursed. Gentlemen, we need about, uh, take about five minutes. Anybody want to give any Preacher, closing I, I, I've comments? got one thing yeah. on that verse four uh, as we've read this text tonight where he says, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world yes. uh, according to the will of God and our Father. I, I want to read <clears throat> what Wiest had to say about this. And Wiest was a, uh, Kenneth Wiest was a scholar. I want you to listen to this. He, he, this is how he defines this thing of deliver. Deliver is the translation uh, of the means. It means to pluck out to draw out, to rescue, to deliver. The word strikes the keynote of the letter. Now, that's the point. The point is for us to receive deliverance. And then he says this, the gospel is a rescue and emancipation from the state of bondage. 
The word here denotes not a removal from, but a rescue from the power of the ethical characteristics of the present age. World, delivered from this world, it, it, it is, is actually, he gives a long, I want you to catch this. We're delivered from all the floating mass of thoughts, opinions, maxims, speculations, hopes, impulses, aims, aspirations, at any time current in the world, which it may be impossible to seize and accurately define, but which constitute a most real and effective power, being the moral or immoral atmosphere, which at every moment of our lives we inhale, again inevitably to exhale. Now that, if that don't sum it up, what we're delivered from, I don't know what does. Because we're inhaling the world, we're exhaling the world in the sense of our lost condition. When God saved you, now you're, it's a, it's a different world. Should be. It's a different world. It's a, it's a different perspective. You don't see things like you used to. That's right. You don't think like you used to. Amen. Your thoughts have changed. Your life has changed. The, the, your very being has, has changed from within. And you don't Amen. live. We don't, even though we fail, and I fail, you fail, we're going to fail. That's right. But glory to God, we can, we can get that we know where our source is. That's right. We can go back to that. I'm glad I've got a spot. Amen. That I can go back Tell to it, and Amen. know Amen. without a shadow That's of a right. doubt, there ain't no devil out of hell Amen. that Amen. can convince me that God didn't save me. That's That's right. Right. God saved me. And if you're saved, you need to know that God saved you. Yes. Not some preacher, not signing a card, not being baptized, right. not, not being a member of the church. And all that's good, fine, and well, but it won't get you to heaven. Sure that's right. Amen. You've got to be born again. Amen. When you, when amen. you get born again, <laughs> amen. amen, you amen. knock the water off the table. <laughs> but when that happens, your life, it, it's just never the same. And, and thankfully, tonight, there, it, it, he says, if, the, if if we're in Christ, old things have passed away. Amen. And behold, all things have become new. That's right. This, this study, I hope, I'm excited. Amen. I don't know about y'all. Praise the Lord. But this has this excited my spirit. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. My heart. And I appreciate you doing this tonight, preacher. Amen. And Praise this is a joy. Yes, it is. I Praise hope it's helped y'all. Praise the Lord. Any closing comments? Mm -hmm. Just to sum up what we've done tonight, I told you this last night. Uh, one commentator used this example. He said uh, a man went up to the edge of a cliff one day and he slipped and fell off, a very high cliff. But on the way down, he managed to grab a stump and hold on to it. And he cried out to God. And an angel appeared. The angel said, do you believe I'm able to, to save you? The man said, yes, I believe you're able. He said, do you know that I'll save you? He said, yeah, I know that you'll save me. He said, well, let go of the stump then. We need to let go of uh, grace by bat water baptism. We Come need on, to let, let, let go of, uh, of grace by, uh, obtain grace by works. That's right. We need that's to let right. go now. of our sin, yep. give it to Jesus. We need just to let go and let God. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. Good, That's a good rep. Praise good the Lord. Word, right? Praise Amen. God. Jamie, you Amen. got anything? Um, yeah, I'd just like to say one thing. Uh, I was listening to uh, Brother Jamie over there talk about justification. And he says something is when you're saved. Uh, we have to realize that justification by faith is a one-time singular event. It's a one-time. Justification is a one-time event. Once you place your trust in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ alone for your salvation, you are saved, sealed, and seated in heavenly places. And that's good news Amen, right brother. Then after you're saved, it's, it's time to grow. It's time that's to right. grow. That's and, right. and, and rest in the hammock of grace. 
Because when you rest in the hem of her grace, why, why, why I say this is because when you're seated in heavenly places, it's a position of rest. Yes. So when you're resting, you're growing. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, yes, thank Father, you so Lord, much, Jesus, Lord, for this Lord. time, Lord, and this uh, panel. Lord, thank you for these oh, men. Yes. Lord, thank you for their hearts. Lord, uh, thank you, Lord, for your finished work, Lord, in which, Lord, words cannot, uh, we cannot correctly express, Lord, no. uh, the largeness yes, Lord. and the beauty uh, of you and your finished work. Lord, help us in the days ahead, Lord, not to... Uh, have only a head knowledge, That's Lord, right. of these truths, Lord, but to apply them to our hearts yes. and apply them to our lives through faith. Yes. Lord, help our faith. Lord, build us up, Lord, in our most holy faith, Lord, that you have given us. Lord, help us. Lord, bless our congregation. Lord, thank you for them. We love them. Lord, thank you for those that may be watching by social media. Yes, and uh, Lord, thank you, Lord, for those that we will upload this, Lord, with your will. Lord, to our YouTube channel, and maybe somebody will find it one of these days, Lord, uh, yes. and, and come to the saving knowledge of you. Lord, help us, Lord, bring us back again at the next appointed time. If somebody don't know you, Lord, um, as the Philippian jailer, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for that. And if someone is listening that don't know you, I pray hey. that they would just reach out in faith and accept hey. you as Lord and Savior of their yes. life. Lord, bring us back again at the next appointed time. And all God's people said, Amen, amen and amen. amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you for your patience.